Introducing Traptic. Traptic's giant farming robots pick strawberries. Our robots are saving the world's food production system by automating the work people don't want to do. Our robotic platform drives across the field, while our vision system detects the berries and figures out how to reach them. Then our patented gripper delicately extracts the produce from the plant. So what does this actually look like? Switch to camera feed a machine. The system's cameras take a snapshot of the scene. Our vision system detects the berries in that image, decides which to pick, figures out the position of that berry, and determines the structure of the plant and bed around it. Then it plans a path to grab it, and our software commands the robot arm to move the gripper to the berry. Our gripper then lifts the berry off the field and closes around it firmly but gently. We then command the robot arm to yank the gripper away from the plant, and because we have a firm grasp on the berry, the stem pops off. We finish by depositing the berry on the conveyor. Just in case you thought this was a lab experiment, let's play that video. Our system does all this in real time, while hanging off the back of a tractor, and moving continuously over real strawberry fields. It is robust to dust, dirt, rain, wind, vibrations, and the other aspects of the tough farm environment. And it operates all day, every day, for months and years on end. Our gripper is totally unique and patented. This gripper must extract berries from a crowded environment, hold them at a certain angle. Let's go back to slides. Hold them at a certain angle to help bend the stem. Apply a great deal of force to break the stem of the berry, and do all this while being very delicate. We grab the berries with soft, food-safe silicone belts that we mold around stiffer materials. This gives the gripper mechanical compliance, allowing it to grab objects of varying size and shape. Without needing any information about the object's properties, we close the fingers with a defined amount of force, allowing us to grab objects of different sizes without crushing or dropping them. This lets the same gripper grab produce across a large range of size and shape, without needing any information from software or any hardware changes. Built on a robust data set. Traptic's robot can find berries and determine ripeness with equivalent accuracy as people. And finally, it does all this locally: no internet, no off-site compute. Industry standard machines are not designed for delicate produce. Conversely, some startups target low-value activities like weeding, only worth one to two thousand dollars per acre. Or they pick, or they harvest fruits like apples, where they are only needed a few months a year. Traptic focuses on year-round strawberry harvest. We don't require any change in growing process, providing a smooth path for deployment. Our master plan: get three billion in revenue by picking strawberries, twenty billion in revenue by picking the other fruits and vegetables, then go after two hundred billion dollars in market in crop value. By automating and improving remaining activities, robots as a service. We pick strawberries, and growers will pay us 23 cents per pound. This is slightly less than the current spend. We provide all aspects of the service: machine, tractor, driver, etc. Traptic has developed testing partnerships over the last three years with the largest commercial growers. Including Nature Ripe and Driscolls, and has done daily testing over the past six months. Traptic will deploy commercially next year. Vinfan, Brian Ratopper, and I built big fixed-wing autonomous airplanes for an AUVSI University project. Wrap it up. Then Vin and Brian went to UTC Aerospace Systems, and I went to Microsoft. 
After starting Traptic, we recruited from UC Berkeley, University of Michigan, SpaceX, GM, and Boeing. Sorry, Driscoll's. Our advisors are globally recognized industry pioneers, Serge Boulanger, Nathan Dorn, Peter Beal. The future of robotics is outdoors. Join Traptic and help save the world's food production system. All right, judges, while you're sampling the wares, anyone have any questions? Thank you. Can you talk a little bit about the capital outlay it's going to take you to, to deploy in a significant number of installations? Absolutely. Yeah, um, the economics of this is something that we've thought about in detail. And um, we, because we're able to operate the machine year round and 24 hours a day, the economics of this actually work out really well. So even after the cost to operate the service, we'll still be able to pay back the capital expense of the machine in around seven months. Can you walk me through that, though? Like, I don't know a lot about those types of machines, but it looked really big. <laughs> How much does it cost, actually, to build one of those? We expect it'll cost us a little bit more than $400,000 to build one of our machines. Okay, and then you're saying that, you know, how, how, how does that operate within, you know, for, for a farmer to, for them to pay 23 cents a pound, how long, you know, does it take for them to generate how much in terms of um, pounds of strawberries? Yeah, so the You're way we think about... Round, right? Of course, yeah. So the way we think about this, uh, we think about it from two sides. So first, what the customer cares about, and the second is what we care about. So the customers care about the cost per pound of berries and the quality of the berries. So the cost is very straightforward because we're using the service model. So we just decide ahead of time what we're going to charge them, and we know that this is in line with what they expect. On the quality side, we recently had one of our customers do a detailed evaluation of the fruit we're picking, and they said our quality is equivalent to people, so we have that solved. The, the scale aspect that you're asking about in terms of how much it's picking, that's something that affects our economics, so something that we care about a lot and we've thought deeply about. And with our production machines at the, the size it will be, because it'll be a pretty large machine, because we'll be able to operate it 24 hours a day, and because we can get year-round usage, um, that's where the, the economics come in, and that's why we're confident we'll be able to pay back the capital, that, that capital expense of the machine in around seven months. Does that include maintenance and downtime on the machine? Absolutely, yes. And what happens to the prior capex from these farmers? Uh, in terms of the, the farmer's capex? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. So the farmers are already using, a typical commercial strawberry farm has several tractors. They're basically in use all the time. They're using them for tons of activities. So, so, so tilling the soil and spraying things on the plants and moving things around the farm. And when we add our service to a farm, they will continue to use their existing tractors for the normal existing activities. And we'll simply be one more activity on that farm. And this is part of the reason that we're providing the tractor and the machine and the driver is because they don't really have any spare tractor capacity available. So we say, okay, we're gonna come in, we're gonna provide everything that we need and they don't really need to do anything. It's a very simple transaction for them. We pick strawberries and they pay us a cost per pound. It fits very nicely into their existing business. Mm -hmm. How do you think about scaling this business um, <clears throat> in robotics? It's generally relatively straightforward to get a demo working. And then you have a pretty big machine that you want to get smaller to get to more farms to manufacture it. Uh, how do you scale that in that dimension? And then the other dimension is how do you get into the other sort of fruits and vegetables, because your picker, your, your gripper technology is probably going to be very dependent on the thing that you're trying to pick. So in terms of scaling the machine, um, what we've seen in agriculture is that machines are typically very large. So when we think of scaling our machine, we actually think of it getting a bit bigger, um, because this is what t tends to work really well. In ag, it's what the farmers expect. It's, it's kind of what, what tends to, to work well. So um, we don't need to like downsize the machine or anything. In terms of scaling economically, um, the, the short payback period here is really important because it allows us to expand quickly with either equity financing or debt financing of the, of the machines. The fact that we're not requiring any change in growing practice is really important because it means we can 
deploy at farms very quickly and with very little friction. We don't need them to like change anything about their field or anything like that. We can just show up, they can try the machine, and they will quickly see that it works well. And then, and so that, that's why we're going to be able to scale very quickly within strawberries. And you asked about other crops. So strawberries are a $3 billion market for us, which is a great market to start in. Um, that'll allow us to get to hundreds of millions of dollars in yearly revenue um, just in berries. Um, of course, the, the, the next two steps are going after the $20 billion uh, for harvesting the rest of the fruits and vegetables, and then $200 billion by um, automating and improving other activities. And so the, reason, or the way our technology allows that is the gripper we've developed actually works really well for a lot of different fruits and vegetables. So we started with one of the hardest fruits that we could think of, which is strawberries. They're, they're, they're very challenging. And the, the gripper we developed for strawberries tends to work really well for other fruits and vegetables um, because it can handle lots of different shapes and sizes of objects. And so we've, we've tried that. So basically, as we expand from strawberries to other fruits and vegetables, we'll be able to reuse like 80% of our gripper technology. We'll also be able to quickly retrain our vision system to operate on different fruits and vegetables. Uh, so we can reuse like 75% of our tech there. And then finally, we'll develop two new form factors of robotic platform. So we'll have one for the ground, one for vines, and then one for tree fruit. And so even that reuses some technology, but we'll basically end up with, with three form factors. And that will allow us to operate in all of these fields. Uh, I like that you're working in a novel area and an application for robotics. I guess I'd like to understand, you started at one point um, during your pitch about talking about the fact that there's about 20% of strawberries that die on the plant. What is what does your comprehensiveness statistic look like? Because I can see that you can pick the fruit without damaging it, but I'm wondering, are there more berries or less berries left relative to human pickers? So the way we think about that is that, and, and this is highly informed by conversations we've had with, with uh, the commercial growers we're working with, is basically we will start out by harvesting half to two thirds of the berries um, in a particular section of field. And they'll have people go through afterwards and pick the remaining berries. So basically, we'll be able to augment their existing workforce, which allows the growers to harvest more acres of strawberries with the same workforce. Um, so it'll allow them to, to, to get those remaining berries out of the field and expand their operations. And for your market sizing, are you using the current market that involves human labor as your market sizing, or are you accounting for the fact that by having automated labor, it's going to change the size of the market? The $3 billion for strawberries is roughly what they're paying for human labor today. OK. Can you just talk about your sales cycle with your growers and farmers? Yeah, so we've been working closely with the largest commercial growers in the world for the past three years. So we're doing a whole bunch of testing in their fields with their tractors and their drivers and getting continuous feedback from them. Um, and what we've seen is that when we begin interacting with a new grower, they typically want to talk to us for a few months and and um, kind of maybe see a demo and then try it out um, after about that amount of time. So a proof of concept and then followed by a sale? Um, that's what we expect, yes. Um, we are pre-revenue, so um, yeah. And when you say that it operates year round, mm -hmm. um, are you assuming that you're going to be operating within a greenhouse environment? Answer that quickly. Is, what was that? Answer quickly. That, that's all outdoors. So. Strawberries are harvested in California year-round. So in the Watsonville area, they harvest for about the warmer six months of the year, and then in SoCal, the colder six months of the year. So we can move between different commercial strawberry fields all outdoors, which is basically how all strawberries are grown in the US. Um, the tech would work indoors, but we're focused on outdoors because that's where they're being grown. All right, give it up for